uh, tracking those uh, COVID-19 cases. That's not all. We get your ground reports uh, on the positive stories in this uh, pandemic situation and lots to look forward to in the next 30 minutes. Views from the administrators, views from stories from our team of correspondents there on Ground Zero. Lots of updates to look forward to, but let's begin this uh, with the top stories of this hour. Active cases of COVID-19 in the country stand at 69,597 with 3,720 fatalities. 51,783 people recovered from the pandemic so far. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman says we'll keep all options on policy response open for the next 10 months to deal with any eventuality. Union Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan takes charge as chairman and executive board of the WHO, says India faced COVID-19 in a proactive and preemptive way with unmatched scale and determination. Empowered Group on COVID-19 says according to a model lockdown saved up to 2 lakh lives and averted 70 lakh cases. Railways modifies terms and conditions of 15 pairs of special trains running since 12th May. Advance reservation period increased to 30 days from the existing 7 days. Mission back home takes more than 31 lakh passengers home by over 2,300 Shramik trains by Thursday night. One Day Bharat Mission continues to bring back stranded Indians. Seven flights to fly back home from Gulf countries today. Global cases of COVID-19 crossed 52 lakhs with over 3.3 lakh deaths and more than 20 lakh recoveries. Outbreak worsens in Brazil as it becomes the second most affected country after USA. WHO says South America is the new epicenter of outbreak. And Russia to ramp up testing for COVID-19 as the country's outbreak starts stabilizing. Well, those were the top stories. Now let's take stock of the developments in India in Ground Zero. Well, the total number of confirmed cases in India have risen to 1,25,101, including the total number of active cases that stand at 69,597 and 51,783 cases having recovered and discharged while the country reached over 3,720 casualties. The states that have been affected the most, uh, uh, Maharashtra remains uh, the, at the epicenter of this particular uh, pandemic in India. Maharashtra, the western state of India, continues to be the one that is severely affected, followed by Gujarat, Tamil Nadu and Delhi, the four states that are in the eye of the storm. Meanwhile, the centre informed on Friday that the country's recovery rate has improved to 40.98% with 3,234 patients being cured in the last 24 hours. Well, the Maharashtra government there has announced taking over 80% of the beds in private hospitals and nursing homes across the states for the treatment of COVID-19 patients. The government has also capped the charges for treatment for COVID-19 and other illnesses at the facilities. Let's take a look. 
More than 44,000 cases have been reported from across the state, and that's the reason why the government has taken a number of steps uh, in last few days. Like 80% of beds have been reserved in, uh, uh, from private hospitals uh, uh, to treat COVID-19 uh, patients. The government has also uh, uh, imposed some restrictions on the cost, on the cost and the price charges by the private hospitals while treating COVID-19 patients. Maharashtra police, especially Mumbai police, have also written a letter to the BMC asking to uh, provide a dedicated ambulances to the uh, policemen because as of now. Uh, uh, there are 18 deaths. Uh, there are 18 deaths have been reported in the Maharashtra police, out of which uh, 14 deaths have been reported. 14 deaths of policemen have been reported in Mumbai alone. However, the numbers uh, uh, of uh, deaths are not very increasing. Uh, are not in fact increasing. The number of deaths, the ratio has uh, has been come down. But the situation of COVID positive uh, cases are still on the rise. This is Yogesh Kumar Sita reporting for DD India from Maharashtra. Well, Assam state government uh, to adopt a ruthless quarantine policy as the state has witnessed a sudden spike in the number of COVID cases due to the inflow of thousands of passengers from outside Assam since the 4th of May. The violators of quarantine norms is to be charged with criminal cases, which was announced recently by the state government. In view of sudden spike in the COVID-19 cases here in Assam, the state government has decided to go for ruthless quarantine policy. We have seen that in, during the last few days, the number is increasing at a very faster rate in the state and the reports are mostly coming from the quarantine centers, which means that inflow of passengers from various other parts of the country has raised to the rise in the numbers. We have reports that 37,000 people from various other parts of the country have entered Assam since 4th of May from the day when the interstate movement was allowed as part of relaxation by center and 12 lakh people more are still waiting to enter the state. And in view of that only, to deal with the scenario in the days to come, the state government has decided to adopt this ruthless quarantine policy under which nobody will be spared if the quarantine norms is violated, whether it is in institutional quarantine or whether it is in home quarantine, nobody, nobody will be spared and the violators will be charged with criminal cases. This is Kamal Bura with my friend Parishmita Boya from Guwahati for Didi India. Well, moving on, Finance Ministry is making all efforts to provide an economic response to the COVID-19 pandemic and the national lockdown. In an exclusive conversation with DD India, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman hailed Prime Minister Narendra Modi's decision uh, according to which farmers can sell their produce anywhere and get the price they want. This will ensure barrier-free interstate trade. She also said that to survive the current situation, firms need to be atmanirbhar and thus the government will keep its options open for the next 10 months. I see it as lockdown being in place even now. The economy and its restart, we can give all these packages, but it still means workers have to get back to work. Mm -hmm. Are they all going to be migrant or are they going to be local workers substituting for the migrant workers? And when the workers come back, how is it that the co companies are going to readjust with them? So there are lots of questions of adjustment, of restarting. So we'll have to wait for it. Uh, I will keep my, all my options open so that the next 10 months goes with a reassurance that the government is there ready to help. Well, the Empowered Group on COVID-19 Chairman Dr. V.K. Paul during a media briefing in New Delhi has said that the timely lockdown effectively put a brake on the speed of growth of cases and the number of deaths. He said that according to a model that uh, he explained, Lockdown has saved up to 2 lakh lives and averted 70 lakh cases. Large number of COVID deaths have been avoided due to this particular lockdown. Nearly 14 to 29 lakh cases have been avoided due to lockdown. He stressed on the containment measures, social distancing having helped control the increase in the number of positive cases. The speed of transmission has also been reduced due to lockdown measures. The COVID outbreak now has been isolated to limited parts or limited places in the country. 70% of active cases stand only in 10 states, while 80% of the COVID deaths took place in only five states. 
Well, bookings have uh, now slowly opened up for 200 passenger trains that will run from the 1st of June. Apart from the online IRCTC option, tickets can also be brought through various platforms, including authorized IRCTC agents. But there are definitely certain limitations in place, including asking people to get their own food and blankets. With the step, the railways is slowly but surely chugging back towards normal operations. Passenger reservations have begun for the 200 trains that would operate on a daily basis from the 1st of June this year. Starting Thursday, people have started booking tickets from post offices, passenger help centers, authorized IRCTC agents, common service centers. The tickets can be cancelled as well. Railways is ensuring social distancing norms are being followed. It is the first time that arrangements have been made for a reservation in the general coach. It means only the passengers carrying confirmed tickets will be allowed to board the trains. Tickets can be booked for 30 days in advance. People across the country were seen standing in queues at the railway station to book tickets. Reservation ticket खुल गया अच्छा हुआ हम लोग के लिए सर बस और क्या मिला हाँ टिकट मिल गया सात तारीख अगले महीना सात तारीख का मिला है मैं रिजर्वेशन करने के लिए आया हूँ बिहार जाने के लिए जो मुजफ्फरपुर मेरा डिस्ट्रिक्ट पड़ता है वहाँ पे जाने के लिए रिजर्वेशन करने के लिए आया हूँ रिजर्वेशन काउंटर खाली है जिसे न्यूज़ में बोला है तो मैंने आया रिजर्वेशन करने के लिए तो सर बोला कि रिजर्वेशन आपको पटना तक मिलेगा तो मैंने कहा ठीक कोई बात नहीं पटना तक मैं कर लूँगा दो महीना से टिकट काउंटर बन है फिलहाल अभी खुला है उसके लिए तो बहुत रात की बात है तो बहुत अच्छा है कि उन्होंने काउंटर्स ओपन कर दिए क्योंकि ऑनलाइन रिजर्वेशन करने में बहुत प्रॉब्लम्स हो रही थी तो हम चाहते हैं कि दिस इज द बेस्ट वे टू बुक द टिकट टिल नाउ ओवर ट्वेल्व लैक टिकट है आर सी टी सी वेबसाइट और एप Meanwhile, zonal railways are working on opening ticket counters in a graded manner in order to facilitate the people as well as follow social distancing norms. Railways had earlier announced that it will run 200 non-AC trains for all passengers from June 1st on a daily basis. The trains will run as per their timetable. The Shramik special trains will continue to operate and ensure that all workers who want to go home get to do so till the 21st of May. 2,317 Shramik special trains have safely ferried 31 lakh workers to their homes. Bureau report, Newsnight Desk, DD India. Well, in order to help passengers, the Indian Railways has modified certain terms and conditions in the 15 pairs of special trains that were running from May 12th. Let's take a look at them. The advanced reservation period, that's APR, of these trains will be increased from seven days to 30 days. There shall be no tatkal booking in these particular trains. RAC and waiting list tickets will be issued in these trains as per the instructions available. However, waitlisted passengers will not be allowed to board these trains. The first chart shall be prepared at least four hours before the scheduled departure and the second chart shall be prepared at least two hours prior to the scheduled departure. Current bookings shall be permitted in between the first and second chart. Booking of tickets shall be permissible through computerized PRS counters, including post office and the Yatri ticket Suvida Kendra, licensees, etc., as well as through online booking, those authorized agents of IRCTC and the common service centers are also places from where you can book your tickets. The, the changes will be implemented for trains from the booking date of 24th of May onwards and for trains from the 31st of May onwards. In Nagaland's Dimapur, around 1325 standard citizens returned through a special Shramik train from Chennai on Friday evening. The train was scheduled to arrive uh, in the afternoon. However, it was delayed by five hours due to the super cyclone. After completion of formalities, the returnees were ferried to the quarantine centers in different districts of the state by the Nagaland State Transport Buses. Passengers were also screened at the station. Well, time now to take a look at some updates that inspire hope and positivity in tackling COVID-19 outbreak.
Well, masks are now our first line of defense in this pandemic and to make them presentable, an art teacher is painting them to the best of her creativity after stitching them on a sewing machine. But this is not all. She is also teaching this art to her students during the online classes and also distributing these beautiful masks to the needy for free. Vishal Baristo brings you this colorful report from Jaipur. Masks are now part of our lives. So how about fashionable painted masks? Now oh, that's a new idea and I have with me Mrs. Kamala Brown. Let's talk to her and find out. People are stitching masks but you are stitching and painting. How did you get this idea? I was stitching masks. All of a sudden I decided why not to paint them. So I started painting them and it came out so well. And I, it was a very fast painting work also. So I start doing it and it is looking very nice very and quick something quick. new. Yeah, it's certainly new. So how many have you stitched and what do you do with them? I've made more than 200, but I give to only those people who need them. Now it's a, a very nice and creative art. So you said that you are a teacher as well. So do you also teach your students how to paint masks? Because that's a very good, you know, in especially for vacation. Yes, I'm teaching in Maharaja Sahib Singh and there I'm taking Zoom classes with the children from 4 to 9. There I've taught them how to make a mask, but not with the stitching. It is difficult for them to use a sewing machine. They have taught them no sew mask and they're painting and they've come out very well and they're so happy to give to the people also. Yes, so happy and so am I because she has also given me this mask which matches with my shirt. So what an idea and it is a lesson for us also. So when you are locked down and feeling bored, follow your passion and do something good for the society. Vishal Beristo for DD India, Jaipur. Well, more than 1,000 stranded Indians will return from the Gulf countries through seven special aircrafts today under the second phase of One Day Bharat mission. Four out of the seven One Day Bharat flights will be from the UAE and three flights from Oman. One flight is scheduled from Abu Dhabi to Kannur in Kerala. Dubai has three flights scheduled, one each to Kurikod, Bangalore and Tiruvanthapuram. The Muscat Bodhgaya flight will be the first flight from the Gulf to Bihar. It is expected to bring back around 150 stranded passengers. Priority on all the flights are being given to distressed blue-collared workers, medical emergency cases, pregnant women, stranded tourists and elderly people. Only asymptomatic passengers are being allowed to board the flight. Yesterday, nearly 1,200 people from the Gulf countries were repatriated to India under the Vande Bharat mission. Well, let's now scan through the developments from across the globe in World Wrap. Well, looking at uh, United States, there has been over 16 lakh confirmed cases of COVID-19. According to the Johns Hopkins University, the death due to COVID-19 nears the 96,000 mark with over 3,50,000 people having recovered from the disease. As the country heads into the long Memorial Day holiday weekend that traditionally kicks off the summer vacation season, traffic in some areas is even expected to surpass the, the pre-pandemic levels. Passengers can travel to the U.S. beach counties having doubled more than what it did since Easter, according to the data by the transportation company Streetlight Data. Meanwhile, Chicago City plans to release guidelines next week for Chicago restaurants and coffee shops to reopen outdoor dining. Bars and lounge have, however, will remain closed for the time being. Well, shifting to Europe, governments around the world are coming up with various course of actions to contain the spread of COVID-19. In Britain, Interior Minister Preeti Patel has introduced a 14-day quarantine for people arriving from abroad starting from the 8th of June, considering the threat of COVID-19. All international arrivals will be required to self-isolate for 14 days and provide details of their stay. The massive uh, measure has been criticized by the airlines who say this will wither away the industry. However, people arriving from the Irish Republic, medical professionals, agriculture workers have been excluded from this rule. The United Kingdom has the highest death toll in Europe with more than 36,000 deaths due to COVID-19 and more than 2,55,000 confirmed cases of the virus. While moving to France for the first time since the outbreak of the COVID-19, French health authorities did not report the daily additional deaths linked to the infection, adding in a statement published yesterday, those figures will be updated on Monday, that's May 25th. 
As on Thursday, the country's fatality toll stood at 28,215, the fourth highest in the world behind the United States, Britain and Italy. While total confirmed cases are over 182,000, meanwhile, France will soon allow resumption of religious gatherings after a two-month hiatus, but with conditions. Worshippers will have to wear face masks, maintain a distance of at least one meter between worshippers and regular hand washing. Europe's car industry was put on alert for more job losses yesterday as the French minister warned Renault that disappearance if it didn't get help soon, while Nissan was considering 20,000 layoffs with many in Europe. Both the companies are due to announce a strategy update next Wednesday. Meanwhile, people enjoyed watching movies outdoors as cinemas, theatres and restaurants still remain closed. However, after certain easing of lockdown restrictions, certain restaurants were allowed to open with special arrangements. Well, moving to Russia now, Russian President Vladimir Putin has asked the officials to ramp up testing for the new COVID-19 as he asserts that the outbreak was stabilizing. Moscow began mass testing residents for the virus antibodies this week. Meanwhile, countries... Uh, Vunkova Airport, which received the U.S. shipment of artificial lung ventilators on Thursday, continues its operation during the COVID-19 lockdown in the capital with restaurants closed and lobbies almost empty. The medical center at the airport carried out regular checks for COVID-19 following the list of checks provided by the airlines. Russia's 8,894 new COVID-19 infections took the nationwide toll to 3,26,448. Overall, Russia has reported 3,249 COVID-19 related deaths. Moving to South America, confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Brazil have surpassed that of Russia to become the second highest in the world after United States of America. Brazil now has 3,30,890 confirmed cases of the disease with a total of 21,048 deaths being reported. Over 1,35,000 people have recovered in the country so far. Sao Paulo remains the epicenter of the pandemic in Brazil with more than 5,500 deaths. Rio de Janeiro is also badly hit with 3,000 plus deaths. Meanwhile, in the wake of the increased cases of the disease in the continent, WHO has said that South America has now become the new epicenter for the disease. Well, that's all we have time for in this uh, edition of Tracking COVID-19. But remember, these are testing times and one needs to be positive, one needs to be safe and one needs to be secure. So be with your loved ones and smile always. Thanks for now. Bye-bye. Take care.